everyone said, listen, Hoist is great, but his brother is literally 100 times better That's than what him. I heard. Yeah. yeah, and then you would see him roll. What Hickson would do famously is he would teach a seminar with world champions in the crowd, black belts, teach a seminar, explain to him certain principles that he used, and then at the end of the seminar, he'd roll with everybody. Mm -hmm. And he would roll with them one at a time. So these guys would wait, and then these black belts, world champions, like the the top of the food chain. They would go in there and roll with Hickson, and Hickson would tap them all. And there's (laughs) there's videos of it, of him just effortlessly tapping everybody. Just rotating in and out, huh? Rotating. No breaks. Bring in the next guy, my friend. And they would come in, and he would tap them too. It's just his level of jiu-jitsu was so advanced. He started, his dad was Elio Gracie. He started when he was a kid. And the thing that separated him from so many of those other guys was his physicality. Because Hickson, his knowledge was as, as good, better than anybody's, but his movement and his physicality, he was also, he was jacked. Right, you know, he was like right. one of the first jacked Gracies. Well, let me ask you this. Why, why was Hoist the one they pushed? Why was, There's a lot of talk about is that. Is it because of Hickson's age? Or no, what? no, 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 because Hickson was still young. Okay. It was, there was a, one thing was that Horian Gracie, who started the UFC, mm. he could control Hoist. Okay. And you couldn't tell Hickson what to do. Okay. <laughs> you know, and the thought was, if Hoist yeah. ever lost, then they bring in Hickson. But yeah. Hoist didn't lose. Yeah. Hoist was tapping everybody. And it was also, it was in some ways a better advertisement for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. Because you had this guy in Hoist who was 175 pounds, mm-hmm. who was tapping guys like Dan Severn yeah, with a triangle choke yeah, from his back. he was smaller, yeah. He was smaller than everybody. Mm-hmm. So it showed just that Jiu-Jitsu was superior. Right. Because the early days of the UFC was really an advertisement for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Yes, it was. Horian yes, was. was a genius. And his idea was like, look, he knew that Jiu-Jitsu was superior if you didn't know it. Right. So all these guys that didn't understand what those submissions were, they didn't understand those positions, and Hoist wore the gi. So when he would grab a hold of guys, guys would instinctively grab his gi. Right. They didn't right. understand. Yeah. They didn't know how to push him off. They didn't know how to leg kick him. They didn't know how to do any of those things back then. So they would wind up getting dragged to the ground, and Hoist was just so much better than everybody. Right. But still, his brother was so much better than him. Hickson, yeah. Yeah, Hickson was the man. And, you know, and everybody said, there's like... There's, there was no argument back then. It was like, who's the best at jiu-jitsu? Everyone said Hickson. Everyone. Right, right. That doesn't happen. There's always debate. You know, like even in boxing, like when Terrence Crawford fought Errol Spence, everybody was like, you know, maybe Spence is too big. Maybe Spence, I don't know. Back then, when it came to fighting, when it came to jiu-jitsu, everyone said it was Hickson. Hickson. But Hickson went over to Japan, and he competed in uh, Valley Tudo, Japan in 1994. And that was, or was it 96? I forget. It might have been 96. And that was when, you know, MMA was really just emerging. And, mm-hmm. and the first pride, pride one, was with Hickson. Hickson versus okay. Takata. Oh, Takata worked with her. Yeah. Hickson, yeah. See if you can find that. Pride one, Hickson versus Takata. But it's just like, once Hickson got you to the ground, man, you were just fucked. You were <laughs> fucked. He was just too good. He was too good and he was strong. He was just a different guy. He was just he now was just was, he was bigger than Hoist, right? Yes, he was yeah. bigger. Did they in, have like a good Gracie documentary explaining how these guys basically invented jujitsu and stuff? Yeah, Gracie in action is very good, but this is Hickson when he was young, when he was in his prime. I mean, this is that's Hoyler behind him, and this is like and Takata at the time was this pro wrestler. And, you know, I don't know what he knew in terms of real martial arts. And Hicks, I mean, this is just a different world. I mean, even if you just see how these guys are moving around, Hickson just stood straight up (laughs) and walked towards him. He doesn't look scared. No, not at all. He just knew all he has to do is get a hold of you. But, again, he's not fighting a guy who's like a real legit striker. Right. And when he did, he fought Funaki, and Funaki wound up fracturing his orbital bone, but Hickson choked him to sleep hmm. in, like, lo- one of the most dramatic finishes ever in MMA. He, he, like, literally had him asleep out cold in a choke with, you know, blood all over the place. It was pretty wild. Was it his orbital bone or was it his opponent's? Oh, he got hit by Funaki, and Funaki okay. fractured his orbital. Wow. So th- now Hickson, like, assumes mount. And by the way, this is, you know, nobody was as good as Hickson back then. His jiu-jitsu was so good. And look, you see how different he is than Hoyce. He was muscular. Yeah. So he was very physically strong, incredibly agile. 
He he could do yoga. He was an incredible yogi. Mm -hmm. So he had like the physicality, but also the incredible. So right now, that right arm of Funaki's fuck or of oh. Takata's fucked. So as he's reaching with his arms right there, he doesn't understand. Hicks is just kind of softening him up here. He is kind of taking it easy on him, huh? Well, he's just he's just cooking them. Mm -hmm. They would just take their time, and once he's got you in mount, you're not getting out, and he gets him in the armbar here. So he picks an arm, whichever arm he chose. I think he chose the left arm. And he's basically just pushing down on him. And now, yeah, see, his right knee comes up, oh. and that's it. Whap! And wow. now you're fucked. <laughs> now you're fucked. And he tapped him. Now, see, find uh, Hickson versus Funaki. That was Coliseum in the year 2000, I believe. And that year was the year that that was when Fedor was emerging and all these other guys were emerging. And this is uh, this was Hickson's final fight. So he's going to fight after this? This is it? No, this was it. This is his last fight. And they, they were talking about him fighting and uh, competing against uh, Fedor. That was the big one. And he wanted a, a, a very large sum of money that they probably should have paid him because that would have been insane. How, how good was Fedor? Fedor was amazing. He was amazing. He might, he might have been the best heavyweight of all time. Mm -hmm. He certainly was in that argument in his prime. So he's, he's beating him up here. And then he eventually catch, gets his back and strangles him. And he, he puts him to sleep. And it's so dramatic because there's blood coming out of Funaki's face. And he catches the choke here. And Funaki doesn't tap either. He just goes out. He goes out. Yeah, he just goes out cold, but he goes out with his eyes open. So when you watch the choke, when they show it right here, like this is it, is, is a wrap oh right here. God. So look at his eyes. Oh, he can't. Yeah, he's out cold. They're stuck open. Yeah, he's just out cold. Jeez. The early days, Kurt Angle, that was the early it was days. barbaric. It was wild. Yeah. It's wild. And to see where it is now. And to yeah. see what's really crazy is this for Francis Ngannou Tyson Fury fight that's going to happen. Well, it is. Fra it's happening. Yeah. Wow. October. Yeah, yeah that's Francis what Francis is, is been, coming in to he's talk been about. Tra training for it. Yeah. 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 Is that in America? No, Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the Saudi Arabians, man. <laughs> oh yeah, they're throwing that money around. Oh yeah. Uh, you, yeah. I don't know how Francis is going to do. This is a boxing match, right? Well, conventional wisdom says Tyson Fury, who's one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time, is going to box his face off. I mean, that's yeah. conventional wisdom. But yeah. there's also the uh, the possibility that he overestimates things, underestimates Francis, and gets clipped. Who knows? A few months, Tyson Fury could be a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, woman. Since your man ain't got no heart, what's going on in my apartment tonight? I'll show you a real man. There you go. 